Uh, right, we started the recording and now we are Zooming uh, and uh, we're on the live stream. We're going to Facebook. Uh, let me make sure everything's fine over here. I always have to do this because I got to check it out and make sure it's going okay. And are we all right? Yeah, there we go. Bingo. Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. Uh, I'm a little, little tired again today, but not as bad as I have been. I, I uh, changed my medicine last night, so what the hell? Anyway, uh, I think it's time for us to start admitting some of our people here. And uh, uh, let me see here. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's what well, we got. Uh, okay, first we got Marjorie, whoever she is. Uh, we got uh, Mandy. We got Lynn LaFrisco. We got Edward Berger. We got That's Jeff right. Stein. And now we're going to admit uh, Rick Sheckman and our old pal, Paula Levin. Boy, we're getting to be a regular here, Paula. Love to Hello. Be here. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm good. Uh, before we go any further, I want to show you something here. Thing here. I want to show you something uh, because Marjorie would like to have you see this. Uh, I, uh, I have this. There we go. I'm now going to go out to our new living room. There we go. There's our new living room. Whoa. And, and over over here, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta figure out how you do that guy. Uh, see the new you're couch? Never make, you're never gonna make Ooh. it as a weatherman. Yeah, no, right? That's a new that's a new couch. It's gorgeous. And uh, the Peloton is gone. Okay. Uh and uh, we always have Gabnet up all the time. So <laughs> that's our um, that's our our living room is is oh and there's a new rug i i can you see some of the rug there wait a minute hold on a second i gotta move out of the way here yeah oh, nice. new rug. That's nice. wow yeah it's a new rug it looks really nice and and everything he does glad the i showed does the fireplace actually work the yeah. fireplace does actually work uh i uh, i it used to smoke a lot the yeah smoke would come out and I learned I went out and bought something, and it's something that brings the the top of the opening down. You know what I'm saying? You get me? And mm -hmm. it, uh, and it, it forces the smoke upward. So I can get a good fire. I get a good fire going whenever I do it. I haven't done okay. it lately, but it's a pain in the ass to get wood up there. I'm guessing. <laughs> well, I we, we used to go to the, we used to go to a fairway, and they used to sell it wood. Mm -hmm. And we would uh, get the wood at Fairway and have them bring it, deliver it. Mm -hmm. And I still got a couple of bundles of it. So we're, you know. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you haven't gotten wood for a while. Does, uh, to, uh, <laughs> doesn't that look cleaner and nicer, Paula? It's cool. it? It's really beautiful. Enjoy it. And yeah. it, it, it looks really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're starting to move into this place finally. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think I have to come now. Let me get rid of this here. Yes. Let me get rid. Let me see here. Am I in San Francisco? No, I'm not in San Francisco. Am I in outer space? No, I'm yeah. not in outer space. Uh, am I in the weeds? I'm in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Anyway, hello to all of you. Good seeing you. Uh, wait a minute. Is anybody else trying to get on? No, nobody else is trying to get on right now. So yeah. leave it at that. Hello, Shecky. How you doing? I'm good, Ben. You? Uh, fine. Fine. Um, you know, I watched the trouble with Harry last night. The print is gorgeous. Yeah, we he got a he got a uh, what do you call it? 4K? Um, no, UHD ultra UHD. high. UHD. Well, that's that's 4K. Well, no, it's like four times the visual. Yeah, but it it it, it, it it's their way of saying 4K that your machine is picking up 4K. Is okay. UHD. UHD. But it's yeah. a but it is a beautiful print. Like on my TV set, which is 4K, at the bottom it says UHD. Yeah. 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 But no, uh, trouble with Harry, in case anybody does anybody remember the picture? Yeah. Uh oh. Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble with Harry. Oh. Uh was shot in Vista Vision up in uh, Vermont, I think, when the leaves were changing or Connecticut or someplace like I think Connecticut. Yeah. While the were changing, and I mean, he had to shoot that thing within a, like a week. 
<clears throat> you know, to get all those outdoor scenes the way they were. And it is a gorgeous looking picture if you get the old Vista Vision print, you know. So mm. yeah. And the as I say, the 4K is beautiful. Yeah. Do you know they still use Vista Vision? Really? The, yeah, for uh, uh the last person to really use it. Uh, who wasn't making a movie, who discovered how to use it for other purposes was Lucas. And for Star Wars, they did all the special effects using VistaVision. Uh, and uh, uh, that was the last real usage of it in that way, because what happened was they stopped making movies in VistaVision. There was a time there where Paramount was doing all of them. In fact, Hitchcock did a lot of his pictures in VistaVision. Mm -hmm. Those 50s pictures were all Vista Vision. Yeah, yeah. I think Man Who Knew Too Much, uh, maybe. I can't was remember. It, Very good. Was it just a larger uh, format film? It's a larger something? format film. It was 70 millimeter going sideways through the camera ah. to give it a bigger plane. And you could supposedly blow it up on the side of a, an aircraft hangar and it would not It would look clean, you know. Hmm. Um, Motion picture high fidelity. That's what they yeah. called it, and it definitely was. I even think, if I'm not mistaken, I have to go back and look at the print, that Psycho was done in this division. I don't know about I, that. I, uh, Vertigo was. Vertigo was. Vertigo that was. I, yeah, yeah, that I do know. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to think, what else? What are their Hitchcock pictures? Well, it's that period, Rear Window. No, Rear Window wasn't this division. No? No, no. I'm kind of a nutcase about this. How do I know what films were in Vista Vision and what films weren't in Vista? <laughs> and what did you have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> no, no, I was in those days. I was into the whole 3D thing and all of that. You know, in the back in those days, in the 50s, all the different formats and so on and so forth. So I know pretty much how that happened. I mean, I can tell you what the first like four pictures in Cinemascope were hmm. in order. It was The Robe, How to Marry a Millionaire. Uh, I'm missing one now. Gee. There's no business like show business? Oh, no, 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 no. That was no. before. That was before. Uh, 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 then there was, uh, there was uh, Beyond the 12 Mile Reef. Mm. Was like, like the fourth one. There was a third one in there, and I can't remember which one it was. Uh, so I can't remember. All the, but they good why, movies. Why I remember those, I, I is amazing, you know. Well, that was there trying to take because of television. When I was a kid in the fifties, I went to every three D movie. Mm. Mm. Every, okay. And there were some. I got to tell you, for a kid who wanted to see cowboys and Indians on the screen and sci fi mm. films, to go and see every three D movie. You saw some pretty horrid films. <laughs> like I remember once sitting through this film, and I just I couldn't walk out because I had my glasses on, and I was going to see this 3D movie too. It was a film called Sangaree. Oh yeah, with Fernando Lamas, <laughs> and it was just terrible because what they were doing and the reason 3D died. Well, they were schlock producers making them. Well, no, what happened was they took all the movies they didn't think they'd have an audience for and made them in 3D. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and that is what really killed 3D were all those lousy films coming mm. out in 3D. And towards the end, they started producing some good films mm. in 3D. But many of them didn't even get released in 3D. But for instance, well, House of Wax, if I remember correctly, didn't that's get released. Just, that's just what I was thinking about the House of Wax, right? House of Wax was the second film released in 3D. The first one was the Iguana Devil. Uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah, about the lion, right? And yeah, the, they, they had the greatest slogan, I think, for a for a. Uh, I, in fact, I want to, to do a documentary on 3D movies from back then in 3D, obviously. <laughs> um, and it was going to, the title of it was going to be, and I was also going to do a book with it as well. And the title was going to be a woman in your arms and a lion in your lap. That's what the <laughs> poster said. Um, but <laughs> no, uh, uh, but towards the end, they did kiss me, Kate, you know, it started doing that one never got released in three days. I think it may have did I, for a short time. 
but the one that didn't get released in 3D, and and now you should really go see a 3D print of it, was uh, 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 Dial M for Murder. Yeah. Style M for Murder was done in 3D, and he, was it? he, yeah, he completely changed the way. I'll have to show it to you, Marjorie. The way you do 3D, he didn't go for having things come out of the screen. He used it for the depth. So he shot from the ceiling looking down, from mm -hmm. he had a camera on the floor looking up. You know, he used it for the depth, the depth rather than something being thrown out at you and the only well like house of wax where the guy is hitting the ball on the whatever you call that thing yeah. the only time in that film that something comes out of the screen and it was brilliant is grace kelly is leaning on her back on the desk as the guy is trying to kill her and she's going to reach for the scissors to stab him and her hand goes back like this you almost want to grab it and say here i'll help you <laughs> and then she grabs the scissors and stabs him in the back. Brilliant use of 3D, but most people never saw it that way until years later, where now you can actually get 3D prints of uh, of uh, Dial M for Murder. So he really loved those blondes, Hitchcock, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yep. What do you What do you What are you doing, Ray? Why don't you just find a picture and stick with it? We. Yeah, I didn't do it. You I turned. You turned to. No, no, you turned to your Zoom and said you didn't have a green screen, and that's what it was doing. It was trying to. No, I got up and I went and got a hat. That's what I did, and then I oh. came. For a moment, it made you look like the Unabomber. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my my history, ladies and gentlemen, of three D. You know, see how much I know about three D. Why? <laughs> you know. It's the one thing about movies I probably know more about than Shecky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. So, My first memory. You know, also, um, Paula mentioned he also loved women wearing glasses. Mm. Oh, they had a whole thing with Meryl Streep uh, about uh, some article about how, how she used those glasses in uh, uh, most of the movies that she made. Like, like in... Um, uh, the Devil Wore Prada, you know, she would take off the glasses and, and do some number. I mean, and, uh, she, it was very, very effective. But, I, you know, I think everything she did was very effective. Uh, Meryl Streep uses glasses the way that Robert De Niro uses a sandwich. He acts the hell out of it with that thing. <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah. But, I love uh, glasses, by the way. That's a what? Good thing. I love glasses on women as well. I agree with uh, Mr. Hitchcock on that. I never felt either way about it you know well there's this trope about the librarian you know like she loses her hair and and takes off her glasses <laughs> and <laughs> and then... <laughs> yeah. yeah it's uh, a timing effect yes it well it gives you like three seconds let me see here does this make you look better total it down. <laughs> we, everybody, you, uh, you probably uh, look better right the, you can I'm, see better Red, well, just I know, you know I we're all it. about to be canceled for saying this, by the way. What? I said the cancel meter is moving into the red right now. We're all about to be canceled for saying that, you know, oh, we for like saying women. that. Saying what? By the way, saying that yeah. like women, oh no, you women are okay. It's the men that were in trouble. Right? I had a very interesting discussion the other night. Every Friday, Saturday night, I get together with uh, three other guys who are usually calling my other show, and we just privately have a conversation. Mm -hmm between us and sometimes it goes for about at least two hours and we got into that whole discussion about sexual orientation and everybody having to say oh i'm non-binary you know that kind of stuff and they're like now 20 categories like that of 30 categories mm -hmm. and we said that we felt that all your your sexual identity should be based on your skeletal identity what does that mean? In other words, uh, they, as they were saying, you can go out and get fake breasts, get your penis removed, get a penis added. You can do any of that. When you wind up in the grave and you decay and all that's left is a skeleton, and then they find the skeleton, they say, oh, that's a guy and that's a girl. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a female. 
But that can be determined by DNA. I mean, even so, I, I, I skeletally identify with male. <laughs> Does that make any sense at all? You know, yeah, just but, shut up when you're a skeleton. You'll they'll look at you and they'll say that was a male, no matter what you do to your body. That's right. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I'm afraid you're not in tune with the younger generation, guys. That's right. I heard well, that I, woman is a bad word. You what? Know, you're not supposed to use the word woman anymore. Oh no. gosh, come on, guys! Like, uh, what, what do you use? Well, then I suppose chick isn't there either, right? <laughs> Gone. Well, you're not supposed to say mother when the mother's having the baby. You're supposed to say birthing person. Yeah, birthing oh, person. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, trans men who can have babies. How about a vaginal projectile? <laughs> 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 my father, I gotta say, my father <laughs> used to have a word he liked to call women, and he he thought it was a great term. And uh, I grew up believing that this was actually not a bad term. It was actually a term you used when you wanted to say something nice about a woman. Is you called her a broad, uh. and the reason he said was a broad is a take charge woman. Mm. And that, uh, you know, uh, Betty Davis was abroad, yeah. you know, in his de uh, definition. And uh, so I always thought that, you know, broad was not a terrible term because it, it was actually complimentary. It meant, hey, you know, you take charge. You're take charge woman. But what about the word dame? I always like that word. Dame? Well, if, if, if she is a dame in England, that's okay. Yeah, but it was more like uh, old-timey, uh, broad and dame, I thought. Yeah. Were very right, but when, when you go dame, hey, the broads, the dames, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dames, uh, I don't know where dames, I mean, I, nobody would use it today. It's just too antiquated a term. Broad is too antiquated a term. But how would it survive today if you used it? Let's say I went on stage and went, hey, how are all you broads this evening? Would I suddenly not be able to work ever again? Probably. Living in a time where someone takes exception to anything and everything. There is not one person on the planet that won't take exception to something. It's just a matter of how big it gets after that person takes exception to it. I wonder if they're canceling the musical Dames at Sea. Yeah. Or, or yeah. there's a musical called Dames. Yeah. 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 How about guys and dolls? <laughs> guys and dolls. Oh my god! Hey. Another ten years, and is that thing gone now? Oh, that's right. a great. That's a great one. It's going to be redone on Broadway as guys and non-binary. <laughs> I guys and vaginal projectors. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Now oh, here comes Brian Neary as well. Uh, Marjorie, what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have any comments to make, Marjorie? No comment. <laughs> Neither, uh, there are, what, three women here, four women here. Do yeah. any of you mind those terms particularly? I mean, like Dane? It, it, or... it really depends on how it's used. Yeah, you know, I, I think the problem really is that uh, we, have to our, our, we have to maintain our sense of humor. Oh, we've lost that and, a long and, time yeah. ago. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's you but, and three other people. <laughs> ask, ask any comedian they'll tell you they don't want to work colleges anymore because they don't like the way the audience reacts to them oh well that's not proper well um, there name me any comedy that is proper you know comedy is outrageous it's supposed to be how about you you uh, uh, uh mandy do, do you mind any of those terms like game or broad or chick I'm my prayer was going um no i I don't mind any of those. I, I don't really hear those. So no, you don't hear them because they're pretty antiquated. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, I just, I just, I just, I don't know. What about ma'am? Hmm. What about mm -hmm. ma'am, Mandy? If somebody goes to you. Thank you, ma'am. You want to slap that teenager? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, what about Miss and Mrs? You can't call them that anymore. Hmm. Seraphim. Who said all this? You can't. I was gonna say, who said that 
you couldn't call people mothers anymore. All the, I must be living a whole. Life. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's birthing. It was person. in the paper last week that now they have a new term for them. Probably I have a person here. By the way, I have a person here who wants to come on called Seraphin E. Castillo. And it sounds suspicious, but let's. This should be good. The, huh? I said this should be good. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. We're rolling the Zoom dice, everybody. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, Seraphin, are you there? Are you there? Going once. Still connecting. Give it a minute. It says. There you go. Well, uh -huh. uh, Seraphin, are you there? Oh, there. There we, there we go. Oh, I see. Okay. Because sometimes I see a name and I go, I don't know that person. <laughs> you know. Hey, turn your turn. You have you ever used an iPhone? Um, I'm actually using Android right now. Yeah. Could, why don't you turn it sideways? Let's see if we can get you. I've got one of these folding phones, so I'm seeing you in full motion. But let me try it this way. How's that? There we go. Oh, see, oh, there's you fuller in the frame. There okay, we go. Great. Yeah. Good How you doing, you Seraphim? Where are you calling from, Seraphim? I'm calling from Sunnyvale, California. Oh, yeah. Well, that's I work right. there. See the gateway to Brian's house. <laughs> and, uh, I'm basically, uh, I've been listening to you since uh, 1981 when I got out of high school and discovered you on Camel. Uh, oh, really? Uh, At Camel? Camel? Yeah, as a matter of fact, when I called up, the first thing you told me is, we don't take no requests, and you hang up on me, and I go, I got to check this guy out. <laughs> <laughs> and millions of those, so he won't remember <laughs> <you>. <laughs> So, so you've you've made me the man I am at fifty some odd years of age. You're almost sixty, Alex. So, uh, oh, really? You know, okay. You know, I, I, I'm just fond of curmudgeons and and all the facts that you've given me, and <laughs> and a lot of the stuff that that you've said has actually come true in my lifetime here. So, it's great to have an echo. Wait, of what's really I said going on. something that came true in your life. Well, you know what? It's funny that. Um, Right now, you're doing something kind of the opposite of what you said. I remember back when Kosovo and all that stuff was going on uh, as the Russian, uh, you know, communism fell, that you said, uh, you know, basically they get a lot of coverage because, you know, they're Caucasian. And you said that things like what were going on in the Middle East and stuff like that weren't getting the coverage they needed because of just the propaganda and the way that the U.S. press is. And I'm seeing the same thing again here with Ukraine. They're a big deal, but you know, while people are dying in Afghanistan because the Taliban taken over, it's almost been forgotten. So again, you you have a lot of things that you observe that that you know it's like okay, yeah, I see it that way. Oh, so yeah. it's, I have to thank you for that. Yeah, well, also uh, I think uh, Ukraine and the fact that we don't pay as much attention to it right now as we did in the beginning is Americans have a bad ability at retaining things. Well, we're and, bored and by them now. We we got bored by them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. now if everybody dies in Ukraine, oh, that was too, that was so bad. Was, I'm so sorry that happened. Yeah, it's been a short attention span. But hey, Alex, before, uh, you know, I get we get into discussions and stuff like that with everybody else. I don't want to monopolize things. Well, we don't we don't get political here, so don't worry. <laughs> no, that's good. That. But hey, I'm just following up on something here. You've never used my Christmas gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex. Yeah. I, think, I think you're. Yeah. I think, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we, we were on great relations when, when uh, I sent you all that extra Zyfaxin when you were having your stomach problems. Oh, because uh, I, oh. I had similar stuff. Really? Then, but, but unfortunately, the... I blew it. I blew it when I sent you the, the terrible gift basket when you were in the hospital at Caesar Sinai that one time, the fruit or whatever I ordered for you. I guess it didn't turn out to be a good deal. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, yeah, did you say I, I was, I, no, I was at Mount Sinai in New York. Mount Sinai, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, I you know, while you were in the name looked familiar. A, the name looked familiar. Yeah, I tried familiar. to send you a gift basket, and I guess it turned out to be something horrible. So I, I, at Christmas time this last year, I tried to even up my score, where I'm basically one and one right now, by gifting you um, a, a bunch of credits on Play on TV. And yeah, I know you're a Hulu user, mm -hmm. and Play on TV allows you to record any program that you want on Hulu from anything you're subscribed to uh, and Netflix and uh, uh, Amazon Prime and stuff like that for 25 cents or less. And I said, I think a hundred credits that should give you like a hundred different programs that you can record. Oh, okay. and keep, Good. Thank you. you I it. Yeah. It's, it's like a DVR in the sky, but you can download these things and keep them forever. So for instance, the last thing I just downloaded was the Batman movie for 20, for less than 25 cents. Oh, it's the best. It's actually perfectly legal 
because what they do is they they don't call it a recording service. They call it a screen recording service. Yeah, but you so see, the thing is, the thing is, somebody is somehow putting it there who is not getting it legally. Oh, no, they're they're actually recording your screen. So, for instance, if I sign up to record a two hour movie, you know, they do this in the cloud. They, they basically take my account to Hulu, you know, log into the movie legitimately. I, you know, I can't log in while they're there if, uh, on one of my TVs because it's a two television license. Right. And then they record it the full two hours. I, I can't get any faster than that. And then I download it. So it's one by one. And so it's perfectly you, so you're downloading something you already subscribed to. As if I was recording it off my screen okay. at home. Okay. So you then have a permanent copy of it. Exactly. Oh, okay. I, right. You know what if I find, and I don't know. I oh, didn't the, thank him. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Very well, much. Well, please look through your email. You know, sometime in December, January, they sent you something that tells you how to set up the account and, and use the credits. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I saw it, but I think I was afraid to do it because I thought it might be a, a you know, a yeah. spam thing. No, anyway, plan you know, the, like thing the, is, kept secret. the thing is, uh, and I'm, I, I'm going to ask Shecky this because Shecky has, mm -hmm. you go to his house and he looks like, uh, well, he looks like uh, a hoarder of DVDs. I mean, you've got how many DVDs? Like, I have a lot in back of me here, but how many DVDs do you actually have? Do you know? A great deal. And I still have laser discs that I've never opened that I've had probably 15 years. Okay, well, I, I would suggest that you not open them, but you throw them in the garbage can. But anyway, <laughs> here's what happens. I have all these DVDs here. Mm -hmm. I don't buy DVDs anymore, you know, because all these films are available. Like, I used to always, like, save series, for instance, that I really wanted to see, like Doctor Who, okay? I have every Doctor Who season that I downloaded and kept in file. And I really don't need to, because all I have to do is go over to my account on like HBO and they've got every Doctor Who since, uh, you know, the, uh, the early days. So, I mean, why do I need to have a copy of it? That's the question. I don't have an answer. <laughs> yeah. and, and you were saying like, uh, uh, Seraphin, about recording movies and it, but those movies are available to me anytime I want to watch them. Yeah, yeah, but when they leave a service, which is constant, I mean, I get constant email yes. from Netflix and Hulu about, oh, this movie is leaving, this series is leaving. Yeah, how many times uh, Star? Yeah, Star Trek has moved to how many different streamers? Yeah, mm. yeah it does move around. Seinfeld yeah. has moved on a couple of occasions. Right, and, uh, and some of the really old movies, um, you know, the, I mean, for instance, the, one of my favorite movies because of the soundtrack was "To Live and Die in L.A." I can't find that anywhere to download. So, you know, I, I had to actually buy a copy and rip, and rip it. Right. So, again, it, it, this play on TV comes in really handy. And most of the time I'm buying credits now at 10 cents. You know what I watched last night? And uh, I didn't tell Marjorie about this. I watched a full movie last night, Marjorie. Um, it was on TCM. And I watched it because it was on their on-demand uh, site. And... Um, I uh, I watched um, the Fountainhead. Oh yeah, the Gary Ooh. Cooper film. Yeah, the Gary Cooper film, which was taken from a book by Ayn Rand, and the screenplay mm. was done by Ayn Rand. And there are a lot of things that Ayn you know, Rand. It's Ayn Rand. No, it's Ayn. 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 They always pronounced it uh, Ayn. Yeah, but I think it's pronounced Ayn. Right. I don't know. I think like is Dan. Anyway, anyway, I I never seen the Fountainhead before, and uh, it I found it a fascinating film. What there are things about it that are dated and old, and you know the acting's a little stilted, and the writing is, uh, you know, uh, her writing, uh, and never having written a screenplay before, I don't think she knew continuity very well because there's certain problems with continuity. But I remember, other, Patricia, otherwise, I I, I I I was fascinated by the film. Patricia Neal was wonderful in that. She was wonderful. I just remember it being uh, brought up in the movie Dirty Dancing, when the the waiter guy gives a copy to her and says, "I need it back. I have notes in the margins." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "Do I need to read this book?" <laughs> yeah. 
But I mean, basically her objectivist philosophy was inherent in this film. And I, I just found it fascinating. I, I found it a, a, a good enough film that I didn't turn it off. I was fascinated by it. So I, I remember skipping over the, the, the philosophy parts and, and going for the romance. It was a great romance. Yeah, but I mean, if the, uh, yeah, a great romance, which wouldn't play very well today. No. Because, you know, rape is not right these days. You know, and there was rape in there. I don't well, know. he forces himself on her, but she wants it. <laughs> you know, mm. that kind of thing. That's what every guy says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things where she like hits him and pounds on him. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. And then she starts kissing her and the pounding goes into grabbing, you know. Yeah, that was a, that was a popular uh, uh, thing to to portray. Yeah, but, but basically, yeah. basically, basically, yeah. what was going on? Rape, okay. And In today's did, men, yeah, you know, but, Bill Burr talks about that on stage. Like what? What? This very real dynamic that happens between men and women with this uh, whatever you want to call it, and how we're not allowed to even talk about it anymore. But that's not saying it doesn't mm -hmm. exist anymore because it's primal. What's primal? The idea of the chase of the of the and the uh, pursuit, you know, oh don't oh do oh don't oh do, which happens still all the time to this day. But now we're not allowed to talk about it, much less put it in a movie like that. Yeah, but I mean, the way it was portrayed, in the movies I watched it, I go, you know, if somebody watched this today, they go, he's raping her. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, he's raping her. But uh, anyway, I found it a fascinating film. I'm just impressed that when Seraphin came on here, you didn't go, we don't take requests and immediately kick him. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you know what, Alex, in line with that, I, I have something to, to correct Charlie on. And, and it's a pleasure to, to meet Charlie after all these times that uh, he's been on and spouting his wisdom. But I remember call, calling in at one time and I had a problem with my microphone. So you guys couldn't hear me. You guys couldn't see me. And he kind of took a, a laugh at, at my name as you pronounced it. And, I, and then the, uh, there was a conversation he had with, uh, with Jack on his show, uh, you know, about my name. And my name is Seraphin, which is the highest rank of angels in heaven. Yeah. Uh, six, you know, three pairs of wings, one to fly with, two to cover their feet and their face because it'll melt your face, I guess, to see it. But the most uh, infamous of the seraphim was Lucifer. Oh. So uh, I've got one of those 50-50 names where I could turn out either way. So <laughs> Lucifer was, in fact, an angel. He was a seraphim. He, were, who he was fell just, from the heights. Yeah, who was then sent to, to rule in hell. Somebody just right. left. I don't know who. Yeah. And if you've ever seen the comics, well, the, the, I guess, what is that? A novel, a, a graphic novel and movie called Constantine. You know, basically the seraphim are mentioned in there when Lucifer shows up. Yeah. 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 Um, so Lucifer. I just wanted to throw that correction while I had a chance. Right. Who left I us? Have Somebody. No recollection of that Sorry. at all. Huh? So that has no left recollection yeah. of that at all. Yeah, it's in, the, it's in the early parts of the Bible where they describe all the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim. No, I know about oh, seraphim. I was raised Catholic, so I, I yeah, know. Yeah, so, so mine, but basically in the biblical spelling, it's S E R A P H I M. Hmm. I thought that the uh, the highest form of angel was Trump. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so what's new down and up and over down in Georgia, um, Mandy? Oh, not much. Just the usual. Went to Savannah this weekend. Oh, really? Is it yeah. nice? Yeah, it was very crowded. Wow. It was uh, What's happening with your with your elections and things like that down there? You've got to. I don't really know. I mean, I think it's I think Sandy Abrams really outraised Kemp. I know that. She's yeah. A lot more money. Does it look like she's going to win down there? I have no idea. I mean, it really I, have, okay. I honestly haven't really been paying a lot of attention of it of attention. Mm -hmm. But um, I, just, I just don't know. I, I, you know, I really like her. I do too. You know, yeah. How do you feel about her, Mandy? I mean, it's. I like her. I, I sometimes I wonder if just how much she griped about the last election, how it hurt, if it hurt her at all. But I think she still got a lot of support. Yeah. 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 
Um, you know, now you got Herschel Walker. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, how, now, here's what I don't understand. How do you manage to even run a dope like that? And I say that with great respect, but if there was ever a guy you could call dope, a dope, not dope. And I will me. tell you right now, it is solely because he was a star at the University of Georgia. He was a football player. And he won the Heisman Trophy. He he is very well regarded. His, and the University of Georgia and people are crazy. And my kid went but the fans are nuts. They, is, that, is, there, is there any chance that at any time soon he's going to speak English properly? I don't know. He, <laughs> no. He's not going to be able to debate Raphael at all. I mean, <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Yeah. And wow. don't even get started on the Marjorie lady we don't like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like O.J. Simpson. If he had forgotten to murder his wife, he'd probably be governor of California. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, wonder, I wonder if OJ thought that the minute that he realized that they were chasing him down the freeway. Well, there goes my chance to be governor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, these are the guys they try. I, it always bothers me. They try and get these guys to run who are not qualified to run, but it's because they have a name. Well, they were on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> really, Herschel, he's like a liar. He's not even an honest person. Like, he's not just he's dumb. He's actually dishonest, too. That's very sad. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of that going around. Huh? Well, yeah. so is our former president, but let's not get into that either. Right. No. Yeah, yeah let's, not, let's, not, let's not get into any of that. Otherwise, I will get terribly depressed. Yes. Yeah. What yeah. percentage of the people in northwestern Georgia actually think like Marjorie Taylor Greene? I mean, are there a lot? I of- have a clue why those people voted for that woman. I, I have not a clue. Well, I she just ran out of polls last well, time. That was that was upstate, wasn't that upstate or over uh, it, a certain part of the state where that kind of mentality exists? It's just very rural and just. Yeah. I guess so it's a point. I mean, if she had if she had run it in some other part of Georgia, she might not have won. No. Yeah. Yeah. She, I think she did run unopposed before. Somehow she's got an opponent now. I mean, so everybody's really crossing their fingers. I mean, there. Jackie, we got some pretty dumb congressmen. Well, we've got New a York. governor who's a slight. You know, I'm not yeah. gonna. Yeah. I'll say you know, it. What I always call the city. What, 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 what Marjorie? You'll say it. She's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We won't say it, but we won't admit it. Well, <laughs> no, Cuomo got her because it was like, yeah, I'll just put that woman in. I got a woman. Yeah. But what bothers me is, you know, we he, Cuomo was doing a good job as governor. He was. Know. And I don't yeah, yeah, but, I, but then he also put this woman on his ticket, and now she's going to win the next election. Well, you know something, though? People were going around asking, um, are you bothered by the accusations against Cuomo? And unless they were like a Republican who had an axe Nobody crime, cares. Nobody cared. Yeah. And yet, oh, they were all dropped. All those charges were yeah. dropped. And But finally, he just he resigned. And I think what, he just looked at somebody and went, I don't have to put up with this crap. I'm getting out of Dodge. Yeah, I, like I don't have to put up with this crap. Do you think he's going to run again, Rick? Cuomo? Yeah. No. No? He doesn't have the backing or the money. He's got the money, but he's going to put it in his back pocket. What's he going to do for a day job, though? What does he need a day job for? Is he got enough money to live for the rest of his life? comfortably oh isn't that guy the perfect professional pundit like isn't he gonna make a deal with the uh, with the msnbc or something oh, like sure that? what is chris i don't know i see i don't know well they, they won't they fired chris cuomo they're not gonna hire mario and well, no that doesn't that make bringing mario on even more kind of provocative not mario it's that, that'd be impossible andrew, andrew. mario andrew, sorry, andrew, sorry. yeah <laughs> yeah uh i mean sorry canadian uh, uh, but doesn't that make him more of a of a uh, of a get? Who but, but, you know CNN is not going to take um, Andrew Cuomo. I don't no, think no. anyone cares Sorry. about him at the moment. Chris Cuomo has a big big lawsuit against against CNN. Yeah, 
big one. Or and both I, of them go to MSNBC. Well, for no, like I, I, I think they let him go. Letting him go was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Because so what if he helped his brother on his campaign? Yeah. But he does in his off hours for his brother. Is his doing, mm-hmm. you know? And and should have no influence on what you think of him as a uh, as a broadcaster. And there's you lo- conflict of interest, and then there's like uh, moral or public public appeal, uh, public uh, perception conflict. Well, CNN loved think- Chris Most- Cuomo when Andrew Cuomo was starting to get into all this trouble, and he could get him on as a guest. You know, they loved him then. But then the minute, you know, he, he suddenly found out, oh, he was helping his campaign. So what? You know, as long as it didn't affect his impartial, impartiality on the air, that's all that matters. You know, so. But I feel I feel sorry. I feel sorry at times for uh, um, uh, Mandy because she lives in that politically ridiculous state, <laughs> you know. But at least it's the state that's suing Donald Trump. And charging yeah, Donald thank Trump. You. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of credit. How do how do the Georgians feel about that? I, well, yeah. <laughs> when you travel a lot around the state, mm-hmm. which I have been this summer, mm-hmm. it's when you get into the rural areas, it's funny because it's such a night and day from suburban Atlanta because yeah. it's all Trump won, fraud 2020. Really? They just live in another reality. Yeah. Well, you know, it's lucky in California that we have the San Francisco area and L.A. Otherwise, we would be like that because if you go the whole central. Yeah. Map, yeah. Oh, yeah. California in, in its on heavy populated areas is a, a very conservative state. Oh, very. You know. um, uh, but Lennon, so is New York. Yeah. Once you get outside of Manhattan, uh, yeah. you know, the five boroughs. Yeah. But we rule the state, so screw them. Um, uh, Len LaFrisco, you've been quiet today. Just enjoying the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, how's it going for you? Good, good. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's beautiful out here. I've been oh. going to wineries on the weekends and, you know, hanging out. My birthday is this week coming up. So, you know, it's all. Yay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How old are you going to be, Len? 62. Mm. Congratulations. Uh, If I'd known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. (laughs) Uh, You say the weather's beautiful out there. Tell them how the weather was here, Marjorie, last night at about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's where it started. It was 4 o'clock. Huge. Did you hear it, Shecky? Of course you heard it. No, actually, I didn't. Oh, my God. I mean, it was like it was right over our head. And it was like this. It was like I could. I could. It was like I was in a horror movie. You know, yeah. I was building a monster in my basement. Hmm. I mean, the thunder and the lightning. And then I went, "Oh my God, Marjorie! Oh, she loves to open all the windows." And I, okay, so I go out to the living room. And now there's a flood on the floor, and I got to close one, two, three, four windows. We don't and, get thunderstorms out here. I miss that sometimes. Yeah, and uh, it was it was hellacious last night. Really? Just hellacious. And then it came again about eight. And then <clears throat> it came again about two hours ago, and it's still going. Yeah, I mean, we live on the top floor, and if there's a wind, it blows in. Mm. You know, if you're down on the first floor, you probably could leave your window open and not worry about it. You know, but we 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 really get it. So immediately, the first thing I think when I hear thunder and lightning and I'm hearing the rain pounding on the windows is I better get out to the living room. And she's snoring away. She's just <laughs> And then finally, I think at one point you got up as I was closing all the I windows. I did. I was mopping up the windowsill. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I just, got a, I just got a call from someone. <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> Don't say his name or he'll call the show and then we'll lose Marjorie. Or I'll leave the program. Yes. Anthony. Anthony, yes. What what uh, did you just got a call? Did you talk to him or did you not? No. No. I just yeah. put your show on mute to let him talk so you didn't have to hear it, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. 
He doesn't know that you call this show on. Yeah, it's only four forty-four, and I'm on your show. Oh, so I'll keep, I'll call you. Yeah. Okay. He's well, this is uh, this is this is an interesting couple of uh, about a week and a half for me because over the next couple of days I've got uh, uh, four uh, three appointments with the with one with the dentist with the COVID doctors. And then the other two doctors of mine, my neurologist, my <laughs> neurologist, and my uh, general practitioner, and and I get I I've got so many doctors' appointments now, I'm rivaling Marjorie because <laughs> in any given week she has at least three doctors' appointments. And well, I'm, it gets her out of the house. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. It's my yeah. social life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Medicare is trying to figure out some way to get her to do something else with her life, you know. <laughs> but you, 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 let's see here. How, how many you have one today? Do you have any others this week? Yeah, a lot. I need to have punch. Hmm? Huh? You need to have punch cards or something. Uh, yeah, right. And but then you, after so but many... you still have insurance from your former job, so. Well, we have the secondary insurance, but we have Medicare. You know. I have some very bad side effects from COVID. And I went to see my doctor on Friday. He was an internist, but he's also a cardiologist. And he checked my heart, but he wants me to go see a lung doctor. Because so many people have had side effects, long range effects. I can't see the doctor till the end of September. She gave, he gave her, he gave her the, uh, the name of what, five pulmonologists? Yeah. Well, the you first to, one was October. First one was October. The second wow. one was uh, was us. Uh, the, the end of September. Which the end of September. Why did you try the other two? Because I didn't want to. These are the top ones that he recommended. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's so many people with long haul COVID effects that yeah. the pulmonary the pulmonologists are have a Our waiting swamp. list. Yeah, my Our sister swamp. has this. Your sister has it. Yeah. Yeah. And it just doesn't, the, the doctor told her it might take several months to uh, get rid of it. And I'm talking about six it. months. Mm -hmm. uh, My neighbor what? What? for about a year. <clears throat> Your what? My next door neighbor had long COVID for about a year. Yeah. Wow. My uh, business partner has it too. How many here have had COVID? I just got over it. Okay. It, My it, son has yeah. it right now. He's sick in his room. Yeah. Did you get no, it? Right? Not yet, no. No. Uh, and uh, yeah, because um, uh, I had a, I, I'm tired a lot, you know, uh, and I think that had a lot to do with the COVID. So, you know, and I didn't have a bad case of it. I, I got rid of it pretty fast because I took the Zyfaxin. Or, 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 no, not Zyfaxin. Uh, Paxlovid. <laughs> My Lanta. <laughs> yeah. These are all Jerry Lewis drugs, you know. Um, and uh, you, you know, a story about the Zyfaxin. Where is uh, where? What happened to Seraphin? Is he still here? I'm right here. Yeah, I, there's too so many people on the screen. I can't. Mm. Um, yeah, hey, hey Alex. Over. Alex, do you mind if I ask Ray Renati a question? Yeah, let me finish with you though first. I want to ask you, okay. you, you sent me the Zyfaxin, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where did you get the Zyfaxin from? Well, the reason I wound up with a ton of Zyfaxin was at the time I did the breath test that they normally do for SIBO. You know, this was something that Phil brought, Phil Myers brought up a while ago that he had SIBO. I have the same thing, small, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And once they do a breath test, it's like a three-hour test. They give you a cup yeah. of glucose to drink, and then they take a broad-spectrum breath test that shows if you're producing any harmful gases in your gut biome. I was producing too much hydrogen. Um, so the Cyfaxin clears everything out, lets you get started, so your gut biome is cleared out and, and going to work okay. And so you had a lot so left. after the test, they gave me a bunch of uh, samples, but my insurance also covered it at $4,000 at that time. So I had all those uh, samples left over. To That's send. amazing that your insurance covered it because my insurance didn't cover it. And It took three I, appeals. To, yeah, yeah, it took three well, appeals before they did it. You, you have to get the exceptions, the pre-authorization, I think they call it. Right. And I, and at that time, here, here's what happened with Zyfaxin. Drug. So it was one thing I found that really kind of stopped my irritable bowel syndrome. And I yep. had been given some samples, right? And when I first bought it, 
I paid, I think I had to pay 300 or something like that. Anyway, Mm -hmm. I finally, my insurance wasn't covering it. So I went up to the local drugstore and I handed him the thing, you know, the prescription. And he said, do you really want to pay for this? I said, well, sure. Because I paid 300, I think, for it before. And that was for like a two month supply. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure. Yeah. This is, well, how, how much does it cost? He says, let me write it down for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, like somebody giving me a job offer, you know, uh, and he writes down. Cause I remember I had a, a boss once who did that to me here. Here's how much we can, we're going to pay you. And he writes it down, pass it over to me. Turned out it was union scale. And anyway, um, uh, I, he passed the thing over to me. $2,100 for 60 pills. Wow. And I'm going, do I get blown with this? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. So I, I finally called my doctor and I said, let's see what we can do. And they got a hold of the company and they got a hold of this and that and the other thing. And they finally got me a one, uh, two month supply. And that was it. I still have it though, because I found a way to solve the problem that wasn't going to cost me three thousand dollars, uh, uh, two thousand dollars for sixty pills. Probiotic. I started taking probiotics, and it went away. Mm. And you know how much yeah. probiotics cost? Next to nothing. I got pro- probiotic gummies here. All right. Yep. Yeah. Probiotics. Unfortunately, yeah. Huh? Unfortunately, with SIBO, if if you get uh, if if let's say somebody gets carried away with giving you uh, antibiotics, like my dentist did for an abscess tooth, yeah. it can trigger the whole condition all over again, and and you need the side yeah. again. So I've yeah. had to take side faxing two or three times. Yeah. Wow. Well. Wow. Anyway, so you wanted to ask uh, Ray a question? Yeah, I've, I've, you know Ray has pretty much told his life story between your show and Jack's show, and uh, <laughs> I know he's a local guy. I know he's a Bellerman graduate. I was St. Francis myself, and I went to school with a, a members of um, one member of the Renati family. I don't know if you know him, Ray, but do you know a Ron Renati? My brother. He is <laughs> my my uh, my sympathies. He was one of my. So wait a minute, let me get this. Let, let me get this clear. You do know him, Ray. I remember <laughs> you now, Seraphin. <laughs> you do I don't think we've ever met, but, no, but uh, you I, know, basically, I, Ron I remember and, my brother telling we just we just became a bear sort of anyway my brother passed away like eight years ago yes yes and and it was in our uh, progress newsletter at st francis and i'd only seen him at our class reunion just a few years before that and he was also married to Teresa, who was another one of my classmates so uh again my sympathies ron was a great guy bigger than life and a good person mm-hmm. Why, uh, is somebody sending somebody morse code here i think they're coming what Where's that coming from? I'm, it's Len, it's you. Yeah, you, yeah, there yeah. You go. yeah. I can tell because it, it flashes. That's an old dot matrix printer, I think. This <laughs> 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 this computer is so old. I don't know what kind of noises it make. Are you still sending your resumes, Rent Len? <laughs> oh, so Marjorie. Well, did I tell? Did we did tell you last week when this happened that Marjorie is selling her Peloton, so she wanted me to help her move it from the living room to the foyer? I didn't tell the story. Do they have a motivational video to help you do it? Well, no, I I couldn't. <laughs> it was we were was so heavy. the back and then trying to get the wheels to go, and uh, I couldn't figure it out and we left it in the dining room because it was just so unwieldy to get in and finally i figured if i got in front when she was pulling up the back and then i got in the front and just pulled it forward then it was very easy to do we did it in seconds i mean we rolled it right in but she's trying to sell her peloton now Hmm. uh which she bought for what 22 25 or something something like that yeah and um, um, uh, she's selling it for, if anybody wants it, for $600. Anybody want a Peloton? All you deliver. have to do is, it's cash and carry. Do you deliver? No. Cash and carry. How much would that cost to ship? A lot. To begin with, you have to bring somebody yeah. in to pack it. You know? 
I have. I just got a text. Oh, I wanna, wait, 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 hold on a second. What, Mandy? I was just going to say, I just got a text from my friend. This is just, you know, an update. Got, he just got gas uh, for 367 here. Oh. At a quick trip. Well, Can anybody well, beat that? We got gas because we had Costco's fettuccine uh, chicken. <laughs> and and the next morning, Marjorie had the worst case of the trot she's had in years. But she's been complaining about constipation. So this we know how to solve the problem now. We just go get the fettuccine. <laughs> Telling Marjorie's problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the next morning I had this the stomach problems too. Chicken fettuccine. If you forget getting any kind of laxative, just get the <laughs> chicken fettuccine at uh, at cost. In my area, it looks like five seventy nine is the cheapest for gas here. So really, yeah. and you say how much where you are again, Mandy? Three. It was, it was at three sixty seven at a quick trip. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Mine was like oh, five thirty nine today when I walked by the gas station. What was it? Four thirty nine, I think. How about uh, you, Paula? Ohio is about uh, maybe four uh, sixty, something like that. But it's but under five bucks. That's down a great deal, isn't yep. it? Yeah. Yeah. So you know they can't blame. You know, I just got to say something quickly. Today I was seeing on, on uh, MSNBC they were having a discussion on how Biden is just being a sale for fist bumping the Saudi prince. And I stopped to think about it. If he had simply shook his hand, he wouldn't be getting any heat. Well, he would because then he's taking COVID back to the United States. Yeah, so exactly. Was. But the reason he fist bumped was because of COVID. COVID. Not yeah. like it's a high sign. Hey, bro. You know, I mean, yeah. nothing There's like that. that. But he's being assailed because he did a fist bump. If he's shaken his hand, he <clears> wouldn't <throat> be given a bad time about it. It would have just been considered to be uh, something you do because it's one dignitary meeting another dignitary. Well, I liked his I liked his reply to the news guys where he said, "Guys, can you can you can we talk about something important here?" Yeah, I thought yeah. that was that was good. Yeah. Well, I mean, gas yeah. prices are down, so people should. That's his fault that they're down. Okay. Mm -hmm. now well, we can... I saw a, I saw a picture today where people now lie in the middle of the street to show how Joe Biden fell off his bicycle. Who gives a good goddamn? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, you know, uh, Marjorie, uh, you know uh, her twenty-five dollar roast chicken, chicken roaster chicken, twenty-six dollars. Yeah, but it's still four ninety-nine at Costco. <laughs> You're right, but it's smaller than a roast. An uncooked chicken, a roasting chicken. Usually, what are fifteen? Yeah, I mean, no matter what prices go up, we usually always plan on chicken being reasonable. Yeah, it's always it's mm. the cheapest one. You know, yeah. and it's not anymore. No, nope. Oh, I hear the rain coming, hitting the window. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's we we've had quite a storm. You've had a problem too, right, Paula? Where you are? Last night, actually, my my um, uh, the electricity went out for an hour. Ooh. That was interesting because all of a sudden, you know, it was gone. And that's always a shock. Um, a shock. <laughs> yeah. When, when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here it goes out because we turn on the microwave and the toaster at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> this we is had a lot of that electricity wow, last it's night. It's starting to come down again. Heavy. Heavy. Hey, Alex. Yeah. With regards to the fist bump, do you think anybody remembers how Trump danced with the uh, Saudis and did their war dance, sword dance and everything a few years ago over uh, Yemen and what they were yeah. doing there when he visited? Yeah, but that was before Khashoggi. That was before, True, but, you, you know, know but, still, but Khashoggi was a game changer. On but it, was, it was that they were slaughtering a, a lot of innocent people in Yemen. Oh, yeah. yeah they were terrible. And, but then again, so was Trump. Oh, look who's here for the end of the show. Uh, he always knows Indian. when to make a cameo appearance. What, uh, Brian, turn on your mic. She got she got hurt this weekend. How'd she uh -oh. get hurt? Yeah, she she went into sleep. You remember I had COVID. So mm -hmm. like, I tested negative now, but I still slept in the office. And she went with mommy and she fell off the bed. And she okay. must have hit up here because 
inside right here, you know, yeah. you have that webbing right there. Mm -hmm. It's actually slit open, so you can see the inside of her jaw really oh. bad. Hmm. I got some marks there. So. Did you did you take her to a doctor or anything? Yeah, I, I took her to emergency on Saturday morning, and the specialist will see her tomorrow. But yeah, it, it's it's pretty cut open, so she's been taking some uh, mouthwash medicine for it. But yeah. she, she's doing okay. Yeah, yeah. I felt I did the same thing, Adrian. I fell out of bed one night when I was sleeping here. And I've never done it. And all of a sudden I found myself on the floor and Marjorie went, what the hell was that? Well, the noise, the noise was so loud. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm so, sure your downstairs neighbors must have loved that. But I feel sorry for you, Adrian. Get, get, feel better soon. Okay, kid? Okay. All right. You know. And you have great hair. Okay. He has the best hair. Yeah. And a great face and a great father. So, yeah. What did she say? She Wait, turn on the mic. <laughs> you keep touching my keyboard, that's all. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway. Hey, listen, that's about it for us. Uh, I really want to thank Marjorie for joining me. Uh, just come over and see us soon, Marjorie. Uh, I will. I will. Mandy, always a pleasure. Wonderful having you here. It's always a welcome face. Len LaFrisco, you're a little quiet today, more than so than usual, but, uh, you know, I we enjoy your presence nonetheless. Uh, thanks from Jeff Stein, Rick Sheckman, mm -hmm. Paul Levin, who we love dearly, uh, uh, Mike Chisholm, uh, and uh, Charlene, thank you so much. Always nice. Just just nice having you here. That's Thank you so about. much. Uh, Brian Neary, and who's got the girl with glasses? Boy, that's hot. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> She's doing a Hitchcock movie next week. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> those your glasses, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a pullback we didn't expect. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And the uh, uh, Seraphin, call us again. Nice having you here, really. really? And Charlie, nice having you here. And finally, hmm. I'm not going to forget. Okay. Time for Edward Berger to sign us off by saying, That's all, folks. <laughs> Everybody, wave goodbye. I'll wave goodbye too. Thanks for being with us. Bye bye. Okay, bye.